In my last video talking about Apple's CSAM detection, I mistakenly implied that Apple would be using something like SHA to detect the CSAM on people's devices. Uh, that is not true. In reality, they will be using something a bit more complicated and sophisticated called neural hash, uh, which cannot be defeated using some of the really simple methods that I talked about in that video, like changing the color of a single pixel in a picture or just converting an image from a PNG to a JPEG. Uh, that will work for SHA, but not for these neural networks, which is what Apple is actually using for the detection. Uh, now, if you want to have a proper understanding of how this works, if you don't know anything about like neural networks or machine learning, uh, I would recommend reading up about that first or watching uh, some lectures about uh, machine learning. Uh, MIT actually has a really good one, uh, a couple of really good ones as part of their artificial intelligence class. And those lectures are free as part of MIT's open courseware. Uh, and you can also read this 12 page PDF that I'll link in the description uh, from Apple that actually gives some technical details on uh, how this is going to work. Uh, it doesn't go super in depth. Uh, and again, you should probably uh, look at that machine learning and neural network lectures uh, to go with this. Uh, but here is a gross oversimplification of all that. So the neural hash is going to analyze an image and convert it to a unique number specific to that image. And uh, only the same image or one that appears nearly identical can produce the same number. Uh, so remember those specific words, nearly identical, right? How uh, identical does it have to be, which is the big question. Uh, and they go on to say that the same image of a different resolution or transcoding quality is still gonna have the same hash value. And they give us an example here. Uh, so we've got a picture of a palm tree at a beach during sunset. And then we have that same picture, but a grayscale version of it. And you can see that this neural hash that it created, which is just like a long binary number, is exactly the same for those two. So yeah, it's a lot more sophisticated and actually better at image detection uh, than SHA, as I implied in the last video, but it's still not foolproof. All that this really means is that you have to make more sophisticated edits to the media to bypass it, right? If you've got more sophisticated uh, detection techniques, you just need more sophisticated evasion techniques. And I actually have some examples of how that might be done. Now, I'm not actually going to be testing the same exact neural network that Apple is going to be using, uh, because for one, the code for it is proprietary. Uh, even though it's gonna be running on every single Apple device, we can't see the inner workings of the program, which is pretty spooky in and of itself. Like that's pretty weird, but we're not gonna go in on that. Uh, and number two, as far as we know, Apple's neural network is hard-coded to detect CP. So even if it was open source, I'm obviously not going to download CP to try and test it. I don't want anything to do with that kind of media. And it's also illegal to have, unless you're a Fed, of course. Feds have some of the largest stockpiles and are some of the biggest distributors of CP. Uh, but I will be giving two uh, pretty close examples uh, so one is actually an open source similar image detection program that uses neural networks for the identification. Uh, and you can download this from GitHub and try it out yourself. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Uh, there's actually five different detection algorithms that are available within this program. Uh, so I'll be testing all of them. Again, I assume that Apple is going to be using something uh, much more, probably better than um, all five of these different detection algorithms, but it's just to give you an example. So I already have it downloaded here into uh, my testing environment. And I just created this, um, uh, this code here, it's just template code essentially, and then you pass in uh, the directory where your files are gonna be, and then uh, put that same directory here, and then file name is the example image that you're gonna be comparing to. So what I have is a whole bunch of different permutations of Tim Cook. Um, let's see, I think this is the original one up here. Uh, and then you can see that there's different kinds of edits. So like this is with increased saturation, 
Uh, this is scaled down, I think 88%, yeah, 90%, 92, 96, 98. Um, this has a 100 pixel uh, Apple logo just randomly added to it. Uh, this has a website overlay, because uh, this is something that I assume uh, would be done with some CSAM media because, uh, I mean, it gets done with like regular pornography. Uh, so I've been told from my researchers that uh, they'll advertise like the website that it came from or uh, maybe like the studio that advertised it or something like that. So maybe that'll appear in the CSAM as well. Uh, and then, yeah, like different backgrounds. And then this is like a blurry image. Um, so we're going to start by testing the uh, CNN detection. Uh, so we'll go ahead and run Python find dupes. Okay, and so it opens up uh, I'll maximize it actually. So it opens up and shows you all of the different uh, duplications that are found. So you can see that there's a whole bunch that are here. Like it's it's surprisingly good at detecting um, duplicates or basically detecting the same image. Uh, but there were some pretty simple things I was able to do to bypass it. Like for example, just making it upside down, right? Inverting the image. Uh, that's the only modification made to this and this uh, detection algorithm wasn't able to detect it. Let's try doing uh, p hash next. I think this actually detects even fewer, uh, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so even fewer detected with p hash. Um, let's see. It looks like, again, upside down fools it, and then all of the images that have the uh, Apple logo in the upper left uh, confused it as well. And these are very simple uh, edits that you can make to a picture. You don't actually have to open these all up in Photoshop and, and do it manually. Um, you can just create like a batch script to uh, batch apply this. So this one found a whole lot uh, again, but um, none that are upside down or none that are rotated or anything like that. Okay, let's try WH hash. Uh, so this found a whole lot. Um, it found our flipped Tim Cook, uh, but again, none of our upside down Tim Cooks are showing up here. And let's do a hash. I, if I remember correctly, this was the best one uh, for finding duplicates, but it still didn't find all of them. Yeah, so this found a whole lot of them. Um, I think this is actually, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's six times four uh, plus five. So this found 25 of the images. Of course, the 25th image being uh, the original one up here. And we have a total of, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five times one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's 31. So that's what, 20, 25 out of 31. So pretty good, but not all of them, right? There, there's ways to get around this type of detection. Now, the next detection system uh, which again, isn't exactly the same as Apple's CSAM detector, but it's similar, and that is Google's content ID system. So Google has the system in place that whenever you upload a video, it tries to detect, well, a lot of things really, like nudity, swear words, et cetera, but most importantly, it tries to detect if you are uploading um, a copy, a work that's copywritten. And this system is so sensitive to the point that People have gotten strikes for content that should be covered under fair use, like if you're reacting to a video or responding to it, even if it's just a small segment in something long form like a podcast, Content ID might flag that. There's tons of YouTubers that have complained about that. But despite this sensitive detection system, people are still able to find ways to upload 
copywritten work to YouTube. Um, so like as the title suggests, this is an entire episode of Family Guy, uh, no cuts. It's actually not uh, 1080p, it's only 720p, but hey, pirates can't complain about quality. Um, and yeah, this episode just exists and there's tons of channels that do this. You've probably seen them and they'll usually stay up until a human finds it manually and reports it. So as you can see, this animation of the tiger in the upper left hand corner and then I guess Peter like freaking out over here in the lower right, that's enough to throw off YouTube's detection system. Uh, so yeah, I hope that this is a better explanation of how Apple's CSAM will actually work and the possible flaws that might exist as far as uh, at least circumventing it goes. And of course, there's still the main concern that I have about this, which is that if it can be used to find CSAM, then it could also be used to detect images on people's phones, which are not actually harmful to anyone, but might just be used to persecute someone, say if it's images related to some type of political, religious, or personal belief. Uh, yeah, the slippery slope with this is still my biggest concern with this technology.